very privileged to be selected to be the first one to get an honorary doctorate, first nurse. But I think the reason I'm getting it is because of the acknowledgement of nursing knowledge in this country. So I feel I'm, I have accepted this on behalf of my colleagues at uh, nursing faculty at uh, University of Alicante, but I feel also I am accepting it in honor of all the nurses who make such a difference in this country. So although it is unusual, it's, it, it should happen because there is now amazing nursing knowledge that makes a difference in patient care. And so we now have the science and the theory that makes a difference in patient cares. Um, it's, um, it's inspiring to the nursing profession to continue to develop knowledge, to produce knowledge that will make a difference in patient care. Uh, it is inspiring that now that nurses are equal to other disciplines in being named as uh, with an honorary doctorate, that now actually nurses can be equal partners with other professions in answering very important questions in society. So we no longer are the, uh, the profession or members of a profession who do not have something to add to the scientific development uh, of, uh, of information and, the, and adding to nursing knowledge, A adding to knowledge in general, it's not only nursing knowledge. So it means there is acknowledgement for the discipline, acknowledgement for nurses, but it also means something really important beyond that. It means that society has to invest in nursing and society has to invest in preparation of the nurse scientists so they can answer those important societal questions. Major implications. Nurses are the largest workforce in the healthcare system. There are 16.7 million nurses in the world. Um, and, um, and, and they are the largest uh, group of people who actually take care of patients. So when we do not recruit enough nurses, that means its patient care suffers. And we have found out through some research from a center in our school, headed by Dr. Linda Aiken, that it affects morbidity and mortality of patients. Every time you decrease the number of nurses and you increase the number of patients, it in increases morbidity and mortality and also um, makes recovery really hard for patients. So, but it's not only recruitment of nurses in hospitals or in institutions, it's also recruitment of students. When you don't recruit enough nurses, then the word goes out that there are no positions for nurses, and then we suffer in our educational institutions in recruiting students to go into nursing because they say, why should we go into nursing if there are no positions for us? So it is instrumental that we recruit nurses to fulfill the needs of patients and not to go up through these periods of time when there are less patients, we lay off nurses. And when there are more patients, we recruit. We need to treat nurses as Uh, the challenge in nursing, it's uh, probably resources to support their education and to support their employment. Uh, so these are challenges for the nurses themselves, but the challenges for nurses who really are patient care, and that is that we don't have enough focus in our society on preventive care. Nurses. Uh, nurses are really good in doing preventive care, in preparing patients for whatever comes next. And, uh, and if there aren't enough resources to hire nurses and keep them in job and, and count this, take advantage of their knowledge, then we are really hurting patients. So there are ch challenges for the nursing profession, but really what nurses care about most are the challenges in healthcare, uh, which are related to we, we focus more on hospital care rather than community care. We focus more on cure rather than prevention. We focus more on communicable diseases and episodic care rather than focusing on um, home care and focusing on community care.
there is a disconnect between the production, the, uh, the education of nurses, and what the market needs. So that we need to work on that disconnect. We need to produce, educate nurses by knowing what the society needs. But the second thing that happened, that happened to us in the United States, is that when the ratio, when, when the number of beds get less occupied, then there is layoff for nurses and there are, then there are no jobs for them. And that hurts patient care and it hurts nurses and it also hurts the education system. So I think we need to look at what the society needs are and we need to look also at some of the evidence and the research that shows that the ratio between nurses and patients is very important in better, uh, better health care and in better recovery for patients. In the long run, it saves the healthcare system more money by retaining the patients and by having enough positions for nurses, of nurses that's equal to the ratio of patients because then the patients heal better, they recover better, and, and the outcomes are exactly what the outcomes we want, which is health promotion and, and healing and recovery and less readmission to the hospital. I can't really separate education from practice, from research. They are all this is a cycle that's very important. It's through research that we find some answers to some pressing healthcare questions. My teaching, our teaching, is influenced by investigation, by inquiry, by actually asking the right question, by involving the students in the love of research. Whatever it is we are teaching, the students need to be able to say, I don't have the answer for this, I'm going to investigate this. And you can't do that unless you are involved in all of them. So I feel being involved in practice, not as much as I want to, of course, because I'm busy with the other things, but being involved in practice helped me ask some really good questions for research. And being involved in research helped in answering some good questions that I'm able to involve the students in and have the students also ask those questions. So that combination is very important. So it's presenting it in terms of that synergy between it and the entire cycle of finding the practice problems, re doing research on it, conveying it to the students, changing the policy is what advances knowledge and in the long run what it does is to provide better quality care that's based on evidence. Aging is a global phenomenon now. The world is becoming more aged and there are going to be uh, far more older people than there are uh, children under the age of five. And I believe nurses are, are the most equipped group of professions to deal with aging because aging is not a problem. Aging is a healthy process. It's a developmental process. But there are challenges in it because it's how do you really manage uh, uh, mem memory, how do you manage physically, and living with it is what nurses would do in terms of helping people to live healthy out in the community. Nurses, although they can provide nursing care in those places, but nurses can actually help people live as long as possible in their home, in their community, where people want to live by providing the support that they need. The support comes in in terms of um, the development of self-care activities, in enhancing health promotive behavior, in enhancing movement for, for the elderly, in dealing with the daily life challenges that some elderly lead. Uh, face because of some memory loss, because of some loss of physical uh, abilities, because of loss of abilities to access the healthcare system. This is an absolutely great question because nursing, nurses' work sometimes is the best kept secret in a society and people don't know what nurses do until they become sick. 
unfortunately. So therefore, they don't relate them to all the preventive work that they also nurses do. And, and, and sometimes we are our worst enemy as nurses because we don't articulate to the public what it is that we do. Uh, so the public doesn't know it. So the first step is to be able to talk about our work. And to talk about our work, we need theoretically to really know what our work is about. So helping people in admission and in discharge, for example, instead of saying, well, I help patients, people to be admitted or discharged, we really deal, we manage transitions. We manage people's transitions, becoming a new mother, becoming a new father, becoming a new diabetic, uh, being just learned about being, having cancer. So there are all those transitions that nurses are critical in them because we help people manage that transition, decrease anxiety, decrease stress in it, increase the skills in dealing with it, increase the competencies to deal with it, give the information, give the resources. So having the language to talk about what it is we do is a first step. Having the knowledge which we have now, evidence that we make a difference is a second step. And then the third step is to let the articulate that, say that to the patient. I am now managing your transition. I am managing your pain. I am I'm helping you with some strategies so you can sleep better. I'm helping you uh, increase your ability to take care of yourself so you don't need to be again coming to the hospital. And then the third step, we need the media. This interview should not only be a nurse's station. This interview should be on public, on public television. Uh, 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 translating our work in language that the public understand. You need to exercise more. This is what you need to eat. This is how you manage your diabetes. And putting it in the newspaper. So we need to learn how to market what it is that we do. Because we want the public to be able to ask for nursing care. And the public doesn't ask for nursing care unless the public is sick and then they understand what nurses do. It's been a pleasure being here in Alicante. I loved all my colleagues, and I'm very impressed with, uh, with the kinds of questions the students ask, the faculty ask, the question you are asking. And I think um, nursing is at a critical turning point in this country, and you're going to be leading Europe.